right, let me explain. At this moment of recording, which is 105 Eastern Standard Time, I have 995 subscribers. So my thought was, I better do it now because I know before tomorrow when this is released, I'm going to be at a thousand or as soon as this gets released tomorrow, I'm going to go over a thousand. All right. So today I'm going to tell you and show you three basic things that you should do with your Pico reef to keep it stable, growing and healthy. This is just in case I go to a thousand before this video comes out. What am I supposed to do? Wait until Wednesday? No way. You guys have been waiting a long time for this. Me? I haven't been waiting for it. You guys? I know some of you have. I bet you can guess the first one. Of course, for me, Tom Reefer, water change. All right, there's the Pico tank. I have the lid off. Here's the ladder. Once a week, I'm gonna to have to climb the ladder to do this. And then I'm gonna siphon from the Pico right down into the Let's Do This Home Depot bucket. I just have the top off and the light showing what we can do here. This is not the actual lighting. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this water level down and the water change probably about two-thirds down. I want to stress out the Royal Grama. It's only been in there about a week. So I've tested nitrate. All right, guys, so I got to go up the ladder for this. What's really cool about the Picos, guys, are they're just so easy to change water. And look at this, how nice this works out. See that? That's detritus on the bottom. And because of the way my flow is, it accumulates all in that one spot, which is perfect. So you can do this if you'd like to. I added a sponge filter there. It's just a piece of sponge. And I put it in there and what it does is it collects any of the detritus or large pieces. It's not a real fine sponge, but it collects anything that goes over the overflow and it keeps the bottom to some degree clean. I'm going to pull it out and look how much that's collected. See that? I'm not using this as any kind of biological filtration. I just want it to remove detritus and all this stuff. See that? So I'm going to rinse this out now. Forgive my arm, but to get this going, you're going to have to see my arm. Okay, I started the siphon. I'm going to push that way down there so I can look up inside here. So I'm trying to do this so you can see. Basically, I'm siphoning all the detritus off the bottom, moving it around. All right, let's, let's stop it there. What about wearing a hat like this? All right, guys, if you want to take less of a chance, you could go with a pump from this bucket. And then, but I'm gonna go the chancy way. Turn the pump on and see what we got. I think from now on, guys, I'm not gonna take that chance. Cause if I miss, you know what I mean? I'll probably just submerge a power head down in there, set it up where the bucket is over here and just pump it in a little slower, but safer. Turning the pump 
Turn the heater back on. There it goes. Okay, it's below the sensor, and I don't want that, so I need to add more water. Remember, guys, this was all temperature and salinity matched, so there's no shock for corals or fish. What I mean by the line is if the water level is on that line, I know I put the same exact amount of water back in and that the return pump obviously won't run dry. You know, if I end, what's even more crucial is when I turn on the sensor, if that water is not to where the sensor is or the line, they match, the sensor will go off and the ATO will pump more water with Kalkwasser in it and that wouldn't be good. I just wanted to show you guys, there's the detritus that I pulled out on the bottom. So in all seriousness, guys, I wanted to thank the subscribers. Obviously, I have maybe a thousand, and it's because you guys subscribed. So I appreciate that. I'm glad you liked the videos enough to hit that subscribe button. That's kind of cool because I know how I am. I'm pretty picky about subscribing. Number two, is placement. You have to be careful about where you place your corals in a pico reef, in a nano reef for that matter, in any reef tank actually, because eventually they grow. And if you have a coral like a hammer that has sweeper tentacles that sting, then you run the risk of killing other corals. So that's why I'm not overloading the tank with corals here. one is adding calcium. Now some of you more advanced reefers may say, well, you're getting enough in the water change. And that may be true. But what I like about dosing Kalkwasser because of stabilizing DKH, pH, and it will also add a little calcium to the water if it should start to decrease when the LPS start to grow and it'll also precipitate a little phosphate, which is a good thing. I wouldn't do any tank without Kalkwasser in my ATO, which is something I've always done. All right, guys, what do you think? That does it for this one, I think, right? Yeah, I agree. All right, so I hope you got something out of this. You Pico keepers, this is the way to go. Maybe you've been doing it and you're doing it a little different way. That's fine too, as long as you're successful, guys. That's what it's all about is success. Success, keeping things alive and flourishing and having fun and looking at it and just enjoying it. Yeah. All right, so have a great rest of the day and I'll see you on Wednesday. Take care now. All right, let me show you the Pico. This is about an hour and a half after the water change. I'll show you how things are starting to open up already. Let's check it out. Back it up with you here. There you go. See, they're opening up already. Water's a little, little bit cloudy at this point, but this is only about an hour and a half after. So there you go, guys. All right.